They're significant because of where they were, and they basically were silent witnesses to what did happen at that occasion. And this was what's so strong about the two Kennedy flags that were on the limousine. The flags on the car at the time of his assassination said something about his status, but they also said something about him. This was an open limousine. He was not crouched down behind layers of steel. This was a man who wanted to be seen, get out and shake hands. But they remind us of the simple things that can suddenly turn around an individual's life or a nation's life. These flags would go with President Kennedy whenever he was in a limousine. It's saying, I'm in the same country as these other people, that my star and their star is on the same, on the same banner, that our commitment is to one another in a way that, uh, uh, regardless of the internal disputes and uncertainties, uh, they can count on. And so that expression of solidarity that came in terms of, of giving aid and support uh, was symbolized, I think, across the country. But the only way we knew, uh, and that was to, to show the flag. You could only think about the incredible tragedy of it. And then, of course, as soon as we left Manhattan and we were in the beautiful Connecticut suburbs, it was like it, nothing had happened. Except one thing made us all cry. As we came under an underpass, some teenagers in Connecticut were, had threw an American flag over the bridge. And as we drove under that flag, we all got chills. I'm getting chills now saying it. We all got chills and started to cry. But driving across from New York to Chicago, it, it, you saw, you really got a sense of how big the country is, how that we would absorb that blow. That, of course, we were all affected, but it, it was still a peaceful and beautiful country. And um, so we took that home with us.